in light of the election, his story in particular really looks at um, how different regions of our country are living in completely different bubbles. Yeah. Um, the red state, blue state bubble. Um, there's a huge difference between Chelsea, New York, and Big Creek, Texas. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we try and look at that honestly and look at a character caught between those two worlds. Yeah. Um, and honestly, you know, I'm from North Carolina. James Allen is from Wilson, Louisiana. Right. Um, we, we both, two of the writers, really do have a foot in the blue state and, and another foot back in red states. Yeah. And, and if I can throw in just a little piece of my own life, uh, I was born and raised in San Francisco, so I come at all of this from the far left coast. <laughs> the bluest of the blue. The, the bluest of the blue. Uh, when I was in college and I joined the Tufts Beelzebubs, uh, a student-run college acapella group, I was surrounded with a room, that's a frat guy, this guy's a chemistry major, this guy's gonna be pre-law, and these are people I never would have hung out with, let alone basically be in a business with, uh, as well as a singing group. And it's where I learned how to listen. It's where I learned how to understand and to empathize and to work things out. And I know it sounds cheesy, but my life's work of spreading harmony through harmony is to try to give other people this opportunity. A hundred years ago, everybody sang. You wanted Christmas carols? There were no records. You had to sing. People used to, in the pub, people sang. Uh, Fourth of July, people got together and sang. Uh, you read all the classic novels. People would get together after dinner and, and they'd sing together. And we've lost that as a culture for a, a number of different reasons. But more than ever, our country right now is so divided. And if people got together, with others who are not the same as them and had some common connection, and music is a very effective way to do this, I think our society would be far more effective That's a neat efficient. thing about what's happening at Circle in the Square, is that every night, 600 people come together in a really immersive way. You actually, the way the seating is, you're watching other people watch the show because you're gathered in a horseshoe right. around this spot. And, and at any time, you're no further than 10 yards away from the actors. Even the worst seat, you're, you're as close as, as the camera is. Eight rows. Um, yeah. uh, but 600 people come together and they experience joy. They, they experience harmony and joy. And to me, that's the most exciting thing. Um, I don't want to spoil it, but when good things happen to characters, the audience is so excited that yeah. that good thing happened. Yeah. When a bad thing happens to the character, they're, they're all going, oh. Like how <laughs> loud. The audience. It's, it's, everyone gets really immersed in it. We're all it's part community. of the group. It's thrilling. All part of the and it's yeah. thrilling for the actors, and too. I, I never, I've never experienced just seeing that on Broadway. Like, Sweeney Todd kills someone, and no, the audience isn't like, aww. Right? <laughs> it just never happened. Well, that would be an inappropriate. It's a little different, <laughs> of course. But the, but the, the, the thing that's so powerful about the story that, that, that Kristen and her fellow writers have written is that it's so real. And if you think about it, almost everything on Broadway now and that has been comes from a graphic novel or a cartoon or a movie or a book or something distant in historical past. What's more present and now, right now in our lives than what it's like to be in New York City with this melange of different people whose lives intersect in different ways, trying to understand who you are and how you relate to them. Yeah.